Hey everybody, Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salisbury, Maryland. I'm working on my Liquid Force uh, Comet pump uh, from a roof system. Um, unfortunately, there has not been the amount of maintenance and flushing that should have been done with the equipment. So the um, check valve and stuff has deteriorated. So we got this kit from Russ. Um, these valves are not cheap. Um, spent about 200 bucks on these. Um, do yourself a favor. Make sure that you are um, fully installing in your employees, and if it's you, uh, make sure that uh, you're flushing this machine well each time. Um, I've actually redone some of the plumbing, so what will happen now is that um, all we have to do is switch a ball valve, and that will automatically flush directly from the freshwater tank um, into the system. And then it actually has it set so we can just, we'll have a bypass lever to, to switch it whether or not we want to bypass into the tank or back into the mixed tank, which is over there. Um, so I've already taken off this side, um, basically just unscrewed the connections. Um, you can see down here the, the pins and stuff to take the unloader out, um, and also the other side there. This one actually just screws in, that's the um, inlet for your supply. A one inch inlet and that's actually right down there sorry about the lighting uh, as usual working late at night working on this um, so I'm gonna get this last bit out get our Allen wrench there um, these ones actually all it takes is a couple you know basically about a turn and then it'll actually be be just twisted out um, around here um, I have not actually taken this side of the pump apart yet, um, because the other side was a lot easier to access, and also um, we were able to find out enough from right there. Um, so these sides, we're going to get in there and look, but I mean, if you can already see the, the rust and everything on there. Again, it's, it's not a reflection on the pump, it is quite frankly just a reflection on um, again, my employees, but also the fact that I was not cleared off with them about how much we needed to be flushing them. So I'm gonna pause this and uh, try and get some of these pieces out. Um, you could take this whole thing off if necessary. Um, I'm gonna try and do that without it just for um, time's sake. So I'm gonna pause it here for a second. Okay, so all I did was take it out, moved it just a little bit. That's gonna give me nice and easy access there. And then I'll be able to actually maneuver these other um, pistons out of here. Um, you can see also inside there, again, sorry about the lighting, uh, but it is pretty black. That's partially going to be related to the, um, just that black particulate that comes out of the bleach. Um, and also certainly um, there have been times where because of the plumbing that we have starved the pump for water. Um, again, something that the revised plumbing will be taking care of that, putting it under pressure and also have a way to actually force water into it if necessary. Um, Again, parts aren't cheap, your time's more expensive than that, so make sure that you are properly taking care of your equipment and set up your system and your employees so that they can succeed in properly taking care of equipment. Um, so, uh, pause this guy and take out the, um, get the right pieces, I, I need to get some pliers uh, and get that out. So, give me a second. Alright, so I've got this side out. Now, just something also to note. Um, and this is the way that the pump's designed. Uh, you can actually see in there, there's literally no spring, which is part of why we're having issues. Um, and actually, you can see little pieces of springs right there as it fell out of it. Um, these need to go in this way. When they're on this side, they go in that way, just for the flow of um, liquid and everything. Now, this one overall, um, certainly we will keep all these parts just in case. Definitely keep those O-rings. Those are still in pretty good shape. Um, this one's actually not that bad. Um, if you look at it, the um, plate here is actually still in decent shape. Um, one of the other ones on the other side, or actually two of the other ones, um, were basically partially eaten up. And so this was still be able to create a good seal. I've actually got spare springs from um, prior pump teardowns that we would be able to put in there in the case of a, um, you know, if we needed to fix in there in the field. Um, I'm not sure what you can see in there, but uh, I'm going to clean that that junk out. Um, I did go ahead and flush some water through the whole system before working on this, just so that I'm not dealing with, you know, super hot bleach or anything else there. Um, again, if you're going to be keeping these pieces, um, 
or if you're troubleshooting it, I would not normally recommend to just use a flat-headed screwdriver. You can use pliers, especially on the other side. It's going to be easier there uh, with the case that these are in. Um, let me then just pry that out. And actually, let's see. Let me just do this with my finger. Comes right out there. Um, so you just heard the spring fall. Same thing. Um, now this one you can see actually, I'm sure well, let's see, but you can see that, that is eaten up a little bit more. Um, and that's, that's to be expected, especially with it being one of the lower, um, valves there. So I'll get this other one out. Right. Just a little bit. second while I get that out. Alright, so by far and away this one was definitely the worst looking one. Um, that is chewed up all the way around. Um, this side also doesn't look the greatest. Yeah, and that's pretty eaten up. We can, we're going to use these just in case we need spares or whatever if one breaks or something. Again, the springs themselves um, are the quickest to, to go since it's such a thin metal. Um, Alright, so we've got those three there. We've got the other three out. Um, everything else looks good in here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the pieces out there. Again, the um, piece will go in here first. And then we're going to put the seal on the outside. And then the put that on there. And actually, sorry, this needs to rotate this way. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick, try and see if I can do that one-handed, although let me just kind of open up the bag here. Alright, so here is the replacement one. Now these ones are blue versus the other ones were white plastic. It does actually seem to be um, a decent amount thicker than these other ones. Um, it could just be simply the fact that they're colored different, but um, hopefully they have made some advancements with these over the last couple months or years or whatever with it. I'm um, trying to put these bad boys in. And um, that's pretty straightforward, just set that in there. It actually fits pretty snugly to begin with. Same thing with that one. And here, now I've already got the O-rings on there. Again, the O-rings on the other ones are in pretty good shape, so we're going to keep that. And actually, if you can see, here's a, another bit of the spring. So I'm just reach inside there and make sure that nothing else. There. If you want, you can also take some water, flush it through. Um, I'm not seeing anything else in there. Um, again, we cut those three pieces right there. So let's get this in. All right. Now the the new O-rings. I'm actually gonna go get a little bit of lube put on that, um, just so they stay nice and hydrated, and also are gonna last longer, be a little bit more flexible and everything there. So, Paul's hair gun. Now, to lube up the O-rings, I've gone ahead and just used some dielectric grease. Um, there are other products you can use for it, but I mean, it even says right on there that you can use it too on O-rings. So we're going to just set that in there. And that's nice and flush. Looks great, all nice and shiny. Uh, put this one down here. It's actually going a lot easier than I had uh, anticipated. You know, with any time you're dealing with Machines and motors, everything always seems to take longer than you would, uh, than what you would hope there. So again, this is gonna slide right in there. And make sure the other spots. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with these top two again, just like with with um, spark plug or not spark plugs, sorry, lug nuts or anything with the tires. Um, don't tighten everything all the way down until they're in. And then I'm actually going to end up um, doing it some form of just basic kind of um, crisscross or whatever on these, so I'm not tightening this up completely and then tightening that up, etc. Uh, just to allow it to fully line up. And get these all in. And actually, just for the sake of the video, I'm going to leave. Those loose, we'll get that tightened up. Obviously, make sure they are all tightened because if you fire this up and they are not tightened, you're going to see stuff spraying everywhere. Get it on you, and that's definitely not safe. 
So I'll put that last one in. Sorry about the angle there. All right. So. All right. So that's three of them in there. Um, it was definitely worse on this side than what I was expecting, but this side as being the outlet um, is going to take more abuse than just it flowing through here because it's not in there quite as long. It's going to sit there longer, um, especially if you shut down the machine or whatever, But because um, you could even, um, some air might get in there just depending on how your plumbing is or whatever, uh, and just from sitting. Um, sometimes also to eliminate the air bubble, what we'll do is actually loosen the inlet to let the air escape and the water that's in there to be able to come in. Um, so I haven't figured out a way to perfect that, but um, I'm going to go ahead and pause again, get the other O-rings out, get them looped up, and go ahead and get the um, other pieces put in. Uh, just an observation, too, when lubing up the O-rings, you can do them individually. What I ended up doing with these three is I actually ended up just putting a big glob on here and then just kind of spun it around a couple of times. That actually seemed to work a bit better. Uh, one of those actually had a decent amount more uh, lube on it than the others. Um, but again, just, just for giving a little bit of coating there. Um, I'll set those right there. Um, all right, so with these ones, the O-ring is actually going to go in first instead of these. Because, uh, again, it's oriented like this and then like that. So i am just switch here. Put that inside. Here. And lost one of the O-rings. There we go. Now on this side when you're taking them out, it's pretty simple to just wiggle it and pop it right out. It should feel nice and snug. Obviously, you don't make sure or you know, want to make sure that it's not going in crooked. That one feels nice and snug as well. There's not a pop like some of them. You'll hear a little bit more of a pop, but you see that's got a nice little bit of give there. Alright. So this side here, again. I'm going to just line that up. Alright, so this lower one is not in all the way. I'm going to take that O-ring back out. Tops in, bottoms in, and the other side there. Okay, so we're gonna go and get these in. And now one of the um, square washers has come out, um, so we're gonna have to figure out and get that one in. That'll be not on the video, but let's put it in place and screw the bolt in. Let's get that. Again, sorry this is running along. Uh, done basically almost about real time, just with a couple pauses in here, obviously. Um, let's get that. And certainly, actually, with the um, washer coming out, make sure that you're checking, or not the washer, sorry, the nut, make sure that you're checking that that hasn't happened in any other spots, because that'll certainly make a difference on how well it's going to tighten up. Alright, so. That one's in. And actually, it's from this back side. If you can just see in there, see right there. That's where this one came out. So we'll end up backing that screw out or bolt. Putting that in here. And again, sorry, this is really up close. Uh, in case you're wondering, I'm using Tiger grip, grip gloves. I love these things. They're pretty durable. Um, hold up against protecting from chemicals and also just uh, general keep your hands from getting all nicked up working on this stuff because it's pretty easy if you're pushing on something to lose that. Now, I have lost one washer. We're going to go ahead and find that, get that put on there. Um, and then pretty much the last things that we have to do is put the unloader. Um, on here, 
that's going to just slide in like that. Put in the piece there. I did go ahead early on and I actually took this part. Um, all you have to do is tap this side just a little bit just to get that out a tiny bit and then take a um, flathead screwdriver to be able to pry that open. That'll take this part um, checked in there, made sure that everything else was all lined up and in good shape. Um, everything looked great in there. You can see in there as well. I'll go ahead and flush it since I've got everything apart. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you got questions, let me know. Um, again, I love this machine. It blows away the, the 12 volts that I used to work with. Um, just overall flow, performance, um, and quite frankly, reliability. Um, to get the same thing though with the 12 volts, you got to make sure you're flushing them, which we will definitely be doing that a lot more. Learned a nice $200 lesson here. So anyways, hope that helps. Uh, again, sorry for the lighting, but uh, again, as usual, we're working out late at night. So um, hope that helps, guys. Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salisbury,